Mr. Wrong by Roger Hargreaves Whatever Mr. Wrong did was absolutely, totally, completely, utterly wrong. However hard he tried, he just couldn't do anything right. Just look at his house. One fine morning, Mr. Wrong woke up. He hadn't slept very well because of the way he'd made his bed the day before. He jumped out of bed, fell over, twice, put on his shoes, on the wrong feet, went to the bathroom, tripping over the bath mat, squeezed out some toothpaste onto the wrong side of his toothbrush, cleaned his teeth, ouch, and went downstairs. Bump, 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 bump. Not a very good start to the day. In fact, his usual wrong start to the day. In his kitchen, Mr. Wrong poured some milk onto his cornflakes and missed. As he sat in his kitchen that fine morning, eating his dry cornflakes, he sighed. Oh dear, he thought, I do so wish that everything I do wasn't quite so absolutely, totally, completely, utterly wrong. So, after breakfast, he went for a walk in order to think how he could solve his problem. It took him ten minutes to get out of the house because he kept trying to open his front door outwards instead of inwards. As he walked along, he passed a worm. Good morning, dog, he said. The worm grinned. He was used to Mr. Wrong. He met a postman. Good morning, Mr. Wrong, called the postman cheerfully. Good morning, doctor, replied Mr. Wrong. Oh, dear. He met old Mrs. Twinkle, who lived down the lane. Good morning, Mr. Wrong, she smiled. Good morning, Mr. Twinkle, replied Mr. Wrong. Oh, dear. And then he met somebody he had never met before. Somebody who sort of looked like him, but didn't. Good morning, sir, said that somebody. Good morning, madam, replied Mr. Wrong. I'm Mr. Wrong. I guess that, replied the person. Well, I'm Mr. Right. Now tell me, he went on, why are you walking along looking so miserable? Because, replied Mr. Wrong, I can't do anything right. In which case, said Mr. Right, we'd better do something about it. Follow me. And off he set, and off set Mr. Wrong, in the opposite direction. Mr. Wright hurried back and turned him round. This way, he said, and they walked together to where Mr. Wright lived. It was a house which somehow looked something like Mr. Wrong's house, but different. Mr. Wright took Mr. Wrong into his living room. I think, he said, that the only way you are ever going to change is for me, for you to come and live with me for a while, and you may end up being not so quite absolutely, totally, completely, utterly wrong about everything. Sit down, he said, and we'll talk about it. Mr. Wrong sat down and missed. Mr. Wrong stayed with Mr. Wright for a month, and during that time he changed. After one week, he was slightly less wrong than he had been before. After two weeks, he was even more slightly less wrong than he had been before. And after a whole four weeks, he was a changed Mr. Man. You could hardly tell the difference between him and Mr. Wright. Don't you agree? Mr. Wright was delighted. Told you, he cried. Told you that everything about you might end up being not quite so absolutely, totally, completely, utterly wrong. In fact, he continued, you have really turned out all right. Mr. Wrong blushed. It was quite the nicest thing anyone had ever said to him in the whole of his life. And he went home and lived happily and right ever after. Now, you probably think that's the end of the story, don't you? Well, it isn't. And the reason it isn't, because of what happened to Mr. Wright. The trouble was, you see, that the longer Mr. Wrong had stayed with Mr. Wright, and the more, Mr. more right Mr. Wrong became, the more wrong Mr. Wright had become. Isn't that extraordinary? Oh dear, Mr. Wright sighed. My plan didn't quite work out the way I'd planned it after all. And he went to bed. In the bath! <laughs>